from the heartland of America on the gateway to the West, good morning, good evening, wherever you may be across the nation, around the world. I'm George Norrie, and welcome to the world's most listened to late night talk show, Coast to Coast AM. Dr. Walter Wagner is our guest this hour. He graduated from Berkeley with a minor in physics, a major in biology. In physics, he's an expert on what's going on at CERN, and he's our guest this hour. Walter, how are you? Good evening, George. I'm doing great. Good. Now, now, CERN, they're going to turn that on soon, aren't they? Well, uh, it's already uh, in the cool-down stage. Uh, it, it's not just a single switch that you do. It's a very complex process. And uh, the uh, large 27-kilometer diameter ring where the particles will be accelerated has to be operated at a temperature of about 2 degrees Kelvin. That's the temperature of outer space. And that takes a long process of cool down, starting off initially with liquid nitrogen to cool it down to liquid nitrogen temperatures, and later with liquid helium to cool it down to liquid helium temperatures. Now, Walter, this particle accelerator is built underground, correct? Yes, it is. How far down is it? It's on the order of 70 meters or so. It's not real deep. I believe it's in some places 100 meters. Um, it's underground because when you are running these high-speed protons or other particles through this ring, it, they produce what's called synchrotron radiation. And uh, that is a very high-energy photon, uh, very penetrating, and it goes through several feet of dirt. And so uh, put it under 100 feet of dirt, and you're safe. Now, are we correct, those of us who think that something could happen if this isn't done right? Or uh, we're exactly correct, George, and that's, that's the unfortunate part about this. Um, there have been uh, reviews that have been done that have confirmed the things that I have been saying, uh, reviews done by the people at CERN themselves, and uh, so it has caused, given them cause for great concern. And in addition, the... Uh, uh, great uh, promotion of Hawking radiation as being the uh, fail-safe that would save us is also uh, admitted that it's you know a 50-50 chance of whether it would work or not. Um, so we're we're looking at something that has the potential to be very disastrous without any kind of a safety net that we can use to prevent anything bad from happening. Okay, now tell us, Walter, what's the downside here then? I mean, what could go wrong? Well, uh, the, probably the easiest one for people to understand is, uh, is the potential for creating a small black hole. Uh, there are, under normal theories, these things would not be created because there's not enough mass uh, involved in cl when these two particles collide together. But... Uh, under some theories involving uh, extra dimensions of space and time that we don't normally see in our three-dimensional space, one-time dimension in which we walk around in, if there are additional dimensions, uh, it's possible that it would allow uh, for the creation of a miniature black hole or micro black hole. And uh, there are some theorists who have predicted that this could could be the case and that the energies or the energy density, I should say, of the a uh, large hadron collider might be able to create such a uh, creature. And if that were the case, uh, it could potentially grow larger and eventually over the course of decades to millennia uh, devour the Earth. Literally suck the planet right in. Well, yes. It, it would It would not occur instantaneously because it would start off so small. Uh, that it would be uh, it would it would have difficulty interacting with the atoms with the nuclei of the atoms of the earth initially uh, but eventually as it slowly did every now and then it would interact and, and suck in a nucleus um, over over time it would get larger and that process would uh, accelerate and uh, so eventually it would be able to do it at a very rapid rate and how long that would take no one knows there are estimates one uh, Theorist in Germany, uh, Otto Rissler, has estimated it could be as short as five years. I've seen other people say it could be as long as a billion years, and everything in between. We really have no way of knowing. What a bizarre story. Okay, if for some reason they – now, no, well, let me ask you this. Is that only in the event something technically goes wrong with their experiments, or by the mere fact that they get it running in three to four months, that – it will be created automatically. It's going to happen regardless. 
Well, it would happen automatically. Uh, yes, it's not like if something goes wrong. It, this, they're trying to create new matter, new forms of matter that have never been seen before on Earth. And uh, there are several different theories as to what kinds of things can be created. And some of the theories are that uh, you could create a micro black hole and it would have a similar kind of disastrous consequence, but exactly the opposite, actually. It would end up in a runaway fusion reaction, accreting atoms into itself uh, and growing larger, but releasing fusion energy, and eventually would heat the Earth up to where the Earth exploded. Instead of imploding like a black hole, it would explode like a supernova. Un initially, if this happens, where would it be? Would it be centered around CERN in Switzerland? Is that where, let's say, this little mini black hole might be? No. Um, it would, if, if it were to make one, uh, most of them would be at very high speed relative to Earth, nowhere near uh, the speed of light, but still several hundred thousand miles per hour. Uh, but there would be a few of them that would be at below the escape velocity for Earth, which if most people know is 25,000 miles per hour to break away from Earth's gravitational pull completely so you get to leave the Earth and are no longer a satellite around our planet. But if there are some that are, some of these black holes are produced with speeds below that, they would become a satellite, uh, if you will, uh, around planet Earth uh, and orbit around and through our planet. Uh, there would, How weird. Uh, yeah, it would, uh, it would spend perhaps an hour traveling through the planet and then several hours up into space and then back down for an hour through the planet and several hours up through space and just keep on in, a, in an orbit like that. Every time it sucked up an atom and grew a little bit larger, its orbit would grow, shrink a little bit, grow a little bit smaller. Eventually, its orbit would be entirely within the Earth, uh, and uh, eventually it would, orbit would start uh, shrinking small enough that it would sink towards the center of the Earth. Oh, maybe it's not nice to uh, play around with Mother Nature, Dr. Wagner, huh? <laughs> Well, it depends on how you're playing around with it. Uh, uh, there's nothing wrong with doing passive exper experiments or observing what, what Mother Nature puts out there. We have a lot of satellites out there uh, observing nature, and there's nothing wrong with that. We have telescopes observing nature. Uh, there are a lot of things we have done uh, which we have very good control over, uh, and there's nothing wrong with uh, work, doing those kinds of uh, works. Uh, there are some experimentations that, that that's perfectly acceptable. But once you have identified some problems, you have to be able to prove that they're not going to happen.